Hello, I'm Elizabeth Denham, the UK's Information Commissioner, and I also wear the hat of Chair of the Global Privacy Assembly. And the Assembly is the international network of data protection commissioners from 130 ju jurisdictions around the world. I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to contribute to the discussion, to hear the conversation. Um, the ICO is a very firm supporter of the OECD and the OECD's work. So I'm pleased to be with you at least digitally in two dimensions, and I really look forward to hearing what Wolfgang and Alessandro have to say about this crucial area. My experience across two decades of privacy regulation is that competition and privacy have never worked so closely together. And in the digital economy, although there may be tensions between our roles at times, consumers and the businesses that we oversee benefit most when our two regulatory regimes successfully come together. And I see this coming together firsthand in the UK. The ICO has a close relationship with the Competition and Markets Authority, including collaboration on research and studies, as well as a formal structure and a shared program of work. We have seconded senior staff to work in each other's office and to cross-pollinate and gain a deeper understanding of each other's work. Modern data protection law has an appreciation of the effect that regulation has on the markets. So in the UK, I have a statutory obligation to consider the impact of my actions on innovation and on the UK economy. In my opening remarks today, I want to explore what the synergies are between privacy and competition and consider three areas. The role of consumer trust, cooperation around mergers, and also how privacy may impact competition. So first, let's go to trust. In competitive markets, we see businesses looking to develop consumer trust in order to distinguish themselves from their competitors. And privacy is fundamental to consumer trust. And I think businesses increasingly know that. Um, just take the example of Apple's recent iPhone advert that was all about how privacy matters. The excellent paper that was produced to accompany this roundtable highlighted an increased competition equals increased privacy. That equation doesn't always add up. And commenting from the privacy side, I think there is a role for us in showing consumers what good privacy looks like. So it's regulators that set the boundaries of what is fair and reasonable when it comes to processing personal data. And it's regulators who can protect consumers when they're not being treated fairly. And those big fines and sanctions that we have under laws like the GDPR really catch consumers' interest as well. I think that when you take the two worlds of privacy and competition, we've made some initial strides, but there's a lot more work to do to help consumers recognize the good from the not so good. Privacy regulators have a role too in pulling back the curtain on hidden data processing. There will never be a competitive disadvantage where poor practice is hidden from view. And it's no surprise that the sectors where we see the most intensive profiling 
are dominated by one or two large providers. This is an important point as we consider digital platforms. And the insight that these firms can derive from the personal data they hold about where we shop, what we believe, how we vote, that can drive their competitive advantage. And it makes new entry into the markets really difficult, especially for the small players. So what is common to the challenges of both competition and privacy enforcement around mergers is that we are increasingly dealing with subjective issues. So what is fair data processing? How much value do consumers place on privacy? And what is the value of the asset that is personal data? And I think the answers depend on the context. And of course, the big context at the moment is COVID-19. My office, in common with many of our international colleagues, have spoken clearly about the importance of pragmatic regulation in these extraordinary times. We should expect increased pressure on both competition and on privacy, law and regulation. We have to show a sympathetic approach to struggling markets and businesses over the coming months. So the second area where cooperation is key is around mergers. And I was really intrigued by the challenge set out in the OECD's paper of how we identify what unfair or excessive data collection looks like when mergers create uncompetitive markets. And I think we can benefit from further conversation in this specific area. A particular interest of mine has been the impact of mergers on existing customers. So most jurisdictions have restrictions on companies buying and selling personal data, but it feels like those protections melt into the background when a company is acquired, even when databases of customer information can be the very asset in the value of the transaction. So that's particularly concerning when a merger allows data sets to be combined. And what comes to mind is the merger between Facebook and WhatsApp in 2016. And in that case, I was very clear that there was not a lawful basis for WhatsApp to share personal information with its new parent company. And that saying to customers, here's our new terms and conditions, take them or leave them, was not getting their consent. There was no real choice there. So the learning from such cases is that, is that there's a growing need for some level of privacy expertise and privacy advocacy in merger discussions. So I've spoken so far about the impact of competition on privacy, but for my final point, I'm gonna to touch briefly on an area where privacy can impact competition. Data portability is an empowering tool for consumers that sits within the likes of the GDPR and Australian consumer law. In the UK, it's had some limited success where it's been used in open banking and energy to further competition and ultimately encourage lower prices for consumers. And there are perhaps two lessons from this UK experience. Firstly, portability appears to benefit from sector-focused initiatives to bring to life what can appear to consumers to be sort of a, a theoretical or an abstract right to be able to port their data between providers. And secondly, portability has been used most successfully where it has furthered competition in markets where several competitors 
already compete for customers. A greater number of competing services enhance consumer choice and create greater incentives for consumers to activate their right to portability. And I see some real progress coming along in various sectors with this new right. I hope that I've demonstrated across some of these examples that there are clear synergies between our regulatory worlds. What we really need to remember from both sides is that while competitive markets and privacy are both important to society, neither are absolute rights and similarly, neither right automatically overrides the others. Both are at their best when they appreciate the other. So I very much look forward to hearing your views, taking your questions, and joining Alessandro and Wolfgang on the panel. Thank you.